Hello, this is Dorian Dar from Fine Tuners AI, and today I'm going to show you how to create instable diffusion isometric tiles that keep the same language coherent and keep the proportions intact. Follow me. Okay, automatic 1111 again, top to bottom. Let's begin with the checkpoint. I'm going to use Juggernaut XL V8. Run Diffusion version, shout out to my friends at Run Diffusion. This is a great model that is capable of realistic images, but also very good at cartoon images like we love on mobile games. So here is the prompt for the tile. Cartoon Illustrated Isometric Water Tile, Fantasy Art, Video Game 2D Art, Naive Art, White Background, and this Laura. What is this Chinese Laura? I'm referring to this kind of obscure lore I found on uh, Civit AI. You see that it's very naive and it has this kind of hand-drawn style, uh, which I like because it's unique. So I'm going to use a little bit of it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use exactly half, 50% weight for this Laura. And in the negative prompt, you know that I don't like to put many words in negative prompts, so just the mandatory few real shot on camera 3D illustration, that should be enough. Now, uh, nothing special here. I'm just going for a batch count of four, 25 steps using the sampling method DPM++ to MCARAS. So far, everything is normal. The magic here lies in control net because we want to be using the exact perspective. So I'm going to upload a very crude tile that has the exact perspective that I need. So I'm using the Kenny model, just making sure I'm using the XL version of it. I'm going to keep this as is. And let's see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, we have the exact same perspective and proportions for the tile so we don't have to compromise and we know that this will work now regarding what's on the tile this is a matter of prompting let's say that we want only water and waves without any land we can take care of this in prompt and negative prompt so let's go with water tile waves right maybe we want even to put like fish inside and here i'm going to write land trees brown and try again okay <laughs> the tile is nice the fish is definitely um, out of scope so let's remove this remember that prompting is an iterative process let's remove fish let's remove shadow and try some more okay so some interesting results here definitely and we can use the same technique to create all sorts of tiles. I'm just removing the negative prompt here, the land and trees. And let's say we want to go with a pond. Okay, that's very nice. And occasionally you see that it draws like the whole background, but this is relatively easy to fix. And we can slice it off in Photoshop and get exactly what we want. But you see that the language, the art language is relatively the same. So we are keeping the same naive language that is the combination of Juggernaut and this Laura. Now let's create structures. I'm going to use the same idea, but instead of using this tile here, I'm going to use, well, actually the same tile just give it a little bit more room for the structure to be up here right because we we've seen already the ability of stable diffusion to come up uh, and fill these blank spaces with things that we want or sometimes we don't want um, but it, it does have this ability so all we have to do is to drag this um, square this tile to the bottom and let stable diffusion imagine what's going to be on top and it's going to safeguard this exact angle, proportions, and perspective. Now let's see, I'm going to change the prompt. So now it's a cartoon illustrated isometric palace, fantasy art, video game to the art, naive art, wide background, and again the Laura to keep the style intact. Let's see what we get now. 
some interesting and creative images here. This one is particularly nice. And what I like about it is, again, it saves our exact proportions. You know, it doesn't step out of these. So we can have, we can be certain that this fits with the rest of our map. Now, of course, if we can produce one, why not produce many? And I went over to GPT and asked it to come up with a few more locations and structures that I can use. So all I have to do really is to copy this, and I showed you this before, um, to go down here to the script, the XYZ plot, and pick the prompt SR. I'm going to copy all values here and just make sure that the first value, which is in my case Citadel, is a part of the prompt exactly as written with a capital C. And now when I'm going to run to generate here, it's going to run these settings, which means I'm going to get four images per prompt, but the word Citadel is going to be replaced with the next in line. So eventually I'm going to get, well, we have 10 structures. I'm going to get 40 images. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so here there are a few of my tiles. And as you can see, they keep a very similar structure. Well, some of it is rubbish, but some of it just exactly as I envisioned it. We have interiors as well. We have exteriors, floating islands and such. And they all keep the exact same proportions and perspective. So this is very much to my liking and I'm sure that they are all going to fit in my games map. Okay, so how did you like this tutorial? Hopefully you found it valuable. Hopefully you have subscribed and if you have ideas for topics that you would like me to cover, things that you want to create and don't exactly know how, write it in the comments and I'll get to it. Yeah.